an incident occurred in my own house that I had to deal with. And uh, fortunately for me, I was old enough that I could deal with it on my mother's behalf. And uh, you know, there's times that, that that's not the case at all. Well, I think it's uh, really important uh, as a professional football team where it's a male-dominated organization and the resource sector, which is male-dominated, that we both become part of the solution. Uh, you know, for many years, uh, it's been women's groups, it's been women livers, it's been um, groups that have focused on creating safety for women, um, you know, creating legislation to make it safe for women, uh, you know, helping women to understand the dangers and the risks when in the end, it's the men that are committing the problem. And so we need to be part of the solution. So I think both the resource sector and the football uh, sector have a tremendous opportunity to, to be part of the solution. The male-dominated uh, locker room in the CFL is, is probably not unlike the male-dominated doghouse in our rigs. You know, there are men out there in traditionally macho roles that are willing to do what it takes. And when people see it, for whatever reason, when it comes from us, you know, they say, well, those guys are kind of men's men. And if they believe it, well, maybe I should believe it too. And by extension, I think our oil and gas industry has that same ability. We have the same professionals. We have the same, um, I guess, uh, goals in some cases as professional sports teams. It's kind of a global phenomenon that men are joining this campaign to end violence against women. It's not just here in BC. Um, football teams in Alberta and Ontario have also joined the, uh, the cause. And other groups of men across the globe are also standing up with women to try to end violence against women. So now we're asking resource extraction to join the campaign. So and people might say, well, why resource extraction? And we're not interested in resource extraction because there's essentially anything wrong about men in resource extraction. But we're approaching resource extraction in the same way we approach the lions, that, th that these are male-dominated environments and the great, great um, positive result that can come from tapping into the energy of the vast majority of men who don't commit violence to begin speaking up to the minority of men around them. Because, you know, violence against women is happening at, at an epidemic level across our country. That has not changed in the last 40 years. And so by the Be More Than a Bystander campaign that's taken hold in the CFL, and now stepping into resource extraction across the country, we think that this actually would make a difference. How women have, have struggled so long to change the issue of violence against women and how it's time for men to step up and become part of the solution. And you know, so, you know, I was still trying to figure out in my own head how, how the heck we were gonna do that because we knew football. We didn't really know anything about any violence against women. But, uh, you know, but uh, the concept was a, a really cool one in a sense that we had a tremendous opportunity. Uh, we had a platform as professional athletes, and so bringing that back to our leadership team, I'm Tracy always tells the story how the, the Lions jumped on board right away, and it was it was really uh, it was a no-brainer for them and everything else. And I remember coming back to our leadership team, talking to them, talking to Wally, talking to Dennis, you know, talking to George uh, and Mr. Braley, obviously at the end of the day, saying, "Hey guys, at some point uh, in our own organization, we're going to have an issue. We're going to have someone who." Uh, commits domestic violence. We're going to have a player who gets into a situation, you know, and we're going to be sticking our neck out here and how are we going to deal with that? And I remember Wally sitting up in that meeting saying, Jamie, you know what, when that happens, we're going to deal, we will deal with it. Uh, you know, we will have to take the, the, the correct action accordingly, but we, we can't shy away from this opportunity to be leaders in a place that really needs it. And so I was really impressed with our, our leadership on that and, and that's, how we, that's really how we got involved. It's important for people to have an understanding of the broad range of abusive behaviours that are part of a, an abusive relationship. 
Um, generally, people who are in abusive relationships experience emotional violence, name calling, put downs, isolation, those kinds of things, as well as spiritual abuse and sexual abuse. Sometimes physical violence, um, but sometimes it doesn't get to even get to that point in an abusive relationship. So really important to be aware of all the different forms of abuse and disrespect. It doesn't just cover the criminal code. You know, it isn't just covering physical assault, sexual assault, criminal harassment. It moves beyond that. It moves to um, using uh, financial power, um, issues of control, maybe constant monitoring and texting uh, through phone calls and Facebook and emails and texts. Um, it could be harassment. It could be put downs. Uh, so there are many ways that uh, women have experienced abuse in our community. What it's important for people to understand is that um, that th these are these are not just things that happen at the physical level. Um, to be to be violated, to be abused, to be put down, especially by somebody you know and love or somebody that you trusted, um, is probably one of the or the most dehumanizing experiences anybody could go through. And so um, that's why we that's why we want to end this. We don't we want we want to end this not just because there's high statistics, but we want to end this because of the psychological devastation that sexual and domestic violence leaves behind. With my work as a policeman, we dealt with violence against people, violence against women in particular, quite often. One thing we do when we give the presentations that immediately gets the entire crowd's attention is when we talk about the statistic that one in three women will be sexually abused in their lifetime. One in three, it's easy to count three women. That means a lot to me. I have two daughters and a wife, there you go. And so for me, that's, I mean, that's shockingly high. And you, you didn't have to say another word to me to, for me to say, this is, that's too much. Uh, and I've heard as high as 50% of women will experience physical or sexual violence during their lifetime. And I, when I think about uh, the province of British Columbia, the country of Canada, I think about my own family with a daughter and a wife and, uh, and how they might, during their lifetime, experience violence. Well, that's just not acceptable. That's not okay. Uh, you think about there's over 1,100 murdered or missing Aboriginal women. These stats don't lie. It's absolutely disgusting to think that this goes on in our society. When is enough enough? You know, when a, when a lot of people talk about um, sexual assault and domestic violence and child abuse, um, we hear about statistics and we hear about the fact that it's happening at an epidemic level. Um, but you don't often hear about the emotional and psychological and lifelong toll that it takes on women and families and in fact whole communities. Um, the impact of uh, experiencing any of these crimes can last an entire lifetime. I mean, one stat that always sticks with me is the fact that it's estimated that 800,000 kids a year in Canada witness the abuse of their mothers. And we also know that growing up in a house where, where, where people are being abused, where people are, are, are yelling, uh, where you might witness your mom being thrown down a flight of stairs, or you might witness your dad killing the family dog, um, you know, the, the, these are very deeply um, traumatizing experiences for kids and obviously they're also deeply traumatizing for women who endure this kind of violence. Um, you know, over, across a lifetime experiencing this or even witnessing it a kid, as a kid can cause, you know, depression. It can cause you not to trust yourself in terms of the partners that you choose. Um, it can cause people to feel like ending their life. If you don't know there's an issue, you can't really address it. So if you have the opportunity to spread that message that it is more common than what we give it credit for, then we'll be able to address that. Nobody really talks about it. I feel as though you have a lot of families, whether it's women or men, that just kind of keep those things to themselves because they don't know who to reach out to or how to even begin to resolve the problem. So if people are made aware that it does exist and that it is unacceptable, then we'll be that much closer to finding a solution. To be able to feel that, just the, just the basic um, right to be safe, like that, that's, really, that's really simple. And myself being a um, a partner to an iron worker you know he's working in those industries and and you know developing or you know whatever he does when he's there in camps because he has gone to camp he sees and he tells me directly what what
can happen there. And so a big part of that discussion between the two of us is about um, having those healthy relationships. I've seen many different cultures and the idea of violence against women, it happens everywhere. And what we need to do is change the culture. Well, we do let this slide. We do let these comments slide. We do let um, people to look at women in a certain way and we do nothing about it. It's part of our culture. We don't really want to change it. It's been like that for 60 years. Why is change so bad? I think it's, uh, it's very important to acknowledge the women who have provided such leadership in this area for so many years, um, you know, from providing support for victims to, to fighting to get laws changed. Um, so that, you know, at this point in time, you know, it's, it's time for, for men to help out for uh, these women that have kind of carried the torch for so long in this field. I'm very proud of, of the association that's been established between our company and the Ending, ending Violence Against Women uh, work that's being done. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of respect for women when it comes right down to it. And I think that we have to realize that what we're doing is we're building attitudes uh, that end up becoming behaviors towards women. So, you know, one of the most profound things that, that uh, kind of hit me when we did the training was when the facilitator said, okay, say you're in the locker room and we turn that joke from a joke about women into a joke about black people. Would that now be okay? And the answer was, of course, no. In my 13 years, I've seen it all. I've seen sexual harassment on both parts, men and women. I remind my guys all the time, you know, they have to watch what they say. And we have policies in place that we don't stand for that. Because when you think about it, everybody has a mother. You know, most men have a girlfriend or a wife. Why not be a voice for them? You think about if something were to happen to them, would you be okay with just standing by and not doing anything? And when we start to make this change, when we stand up together to say that these kinds of behaviors are inappropriate, we're actually not only stopping an abusive interaction, but we're working towards stopping uh, murder, violence, death. Hello to pick up one, Tony. Pull to grab all 18, Tony. 3 FD, 18, Tony. Uh, you're leaving camp in the dark, you're going back in the dark. That weighs heavy on a person after a while. It is, um, well, I've been there for so long. It's it's like I'm I'm in camp more than I am at home. It's, uh, my, my wife hates me calling at home. Yeah, I'm gonna go home. No, I'm not going home, I'm going to camp. Psychological hazards uh, have become much more prominent and, and our awareness of them in the industry have become much more uh, in tune, I, b I would suggest, in the last decade. Whether it's alcohol and drugs and the effects that those have on our workforce, or whether it's uh, violence in the workplace, uh, or whether it's uh, uh, violence against women in our workplace, those issues are becoming more and more well understood. They're better reported to us, and because we understand them better, and because we're hearing about them, we're able to act upon them. Yeah, there's no doubt that uh, the what we've learned around all the hazards that our workers face in the workplace is that uh, violence is, is yet another hazard. You're taken away from civilization pretty much, sat in a room in a box 100 kilometers from the closest piece of pavement. We're all away from home for long periods of time and you miss your family and friends, those people you feel like you can connect with most. It's tough. I think, you know, if I put myself in their shoes, I just imagine it's got to be tough to be a young woman and walk into a kitchen, for example, where there's 200 guys sitting there and everyone stops and stares at you. How would that make you feel? So for those women who might be experiencing um, uh, violence or abuse anywhere on the continuum, when they're at work, they're going to be distracted and sometimes they are getting calls because the person that's abusing them is following them, they're jealous, they're calling them incessantly at work, they're texting them at work. So if you see one of your coworkers who might be getting calls from their spouse and being upset after a call, uh, that might be an indication that, um, that inspires you to reach out to that coworker and ask her if she's okay and let her know that, that, that if she's experiencing anything in her life, that you're, an, you're a safe person, that you, you're open to talking with her about that.
And I know a lot of women that have gone, the friends of mine that have gone pipelining or welding or welders helpers. And some of the stories they have, are, it's pretty sad, you know, only because you run into the wrong guy at the wrong time who's in the wrong mood. And he's only got to say or do one thing. You've got guys that are coming out of here and girls and you are stressed when you leave here at the end of a tour. That can create a lot of other things at home. Uh, if things are dishwashers broken, the washers broken, uh, things can get out of hand. Uh, violence can occur, uh, whether it be male or female. And then when it's time to come back to work, they're bringing that with them. Uh, I think when someone brings stress to work, it just the, the attitude that they bring with it um, can, can bring everyone down essentially. I've got female work colleagues here who've gone through their own struggles and felt vulnerable at times and it's maybe had an impact on their work. If you don't feel that you're in a, a safe uh, workplace from a, uh, let's say, respect or from a harassment perspective, I would argue that you're not going to be working, you're not going to have your, your mind on the task either, and physically you're not going to be as safe. And we also know that men get distracted when they're you know, engage in acts of jealousy or, or harassment of female partners, they can actually cause injuries to their fellow workers and to themselves. They got to have 100% of their attention at all times or, or someone gets hurt and whether it's them or one of their co-workers, it, it, uh, it only takes a second to happen. The most serious situation I think a company faces is when they know something and they fail to act. And whether it's we know that there's an alcohol problem but we fail to act and that leads to an incident or whether we know that there's an abuse situation in our workplace and we fail to act, that's where we really let everybody down. So I think the real situation for us is to have the tools and the knowledge to act when we become aware of an issue. The bystander program is critical for social change. One of the tragedies of violence is not only the harm done by offenders, but it's also the silence of everyone else. Being more than a bystander means I'm not going to stand idly by and say nothing, because by doing that, I'm saying that it's okay. We have things implemented in our company that says everyone deserves a voice that is heard without criticism. People in workplaces are sometimes targets from their coworkers. And, uh, and so uh, companies having a policy that encourages people to be more than bystanders and to speak up if they see something happening around them, if they see somebody being abused around them, or having a company policy to say that if something is going on for you, whether it's happened at home or whether it's happening on the job, we want you to come to your supervisor. We want you to come and disclose that because ultimately, as a company, we care about your well-being. Anybody can be more than a bystander. It's as simple as just speaking up and taking a stand. You know what's right and wrong. You see something going on, say something. Something is better than saying nothing at all. Quite often, when a woman first breaks the silence, it's a family, a friend, or a neighbor. So I think we are all equipped to be able to help and listen without judgment. You may think that you look silly to your friends, but it doesn't matter. That's not what's important here. What's important is that we're making a difference in somebody's life. You see it, you own it. And it's your job to do something about it. And that's what we would expect from people that 
work with our company and in our industry. If you're a good person and you want to speak up to the benefits and everything, be heard. Be doing it all the time. Don't be the person that's accepting of the crass joke. Don't be the person that starts the crass joke. Um, it's just been in the last 15 or 16 years that I've actually had the balls to uh, speak up about it and, and take a stand against it. Somebody needs to take the initiative to say, no, no, we can't have this anymore. It can't be like this. I don't like it. A lot of people other than me don't like it, and it needs to stop. More than anything, it's, it's not just, you know, so often they say, well, you're, you know, you guys are big football guys and people look up to you, and so it's one thing for you guys to say something, but, you know, maybe that's not me. Well, we're, what we're saying is it's, it's not a superhuman approach. You know, you may only be comfortable uh, changing the subject or, um, or leaving and, and showing that you're not okay with, with something, um, but as you do more, as you say more and as you get more into it, you will develop the confidence to say, hey, that's not okay and I'm not okay with that and this isn't respectful to women. I would start by just interrupting the, the, the scenario so that it doesn't just continue with the insults and the abuse. And then uh, if it's a friend of yours, pull him aside. Uh, talk to him privately about your concern for him and the behavior. Every worker in our industry needs to know and believe and understand that there should be no repercussions to them for standing up, whether that's stopping work when conditions are unsafe or whether there's harassment or other uh, concerns in the workplace. They need to know and believe that, that they can stop work, they can speak up without any fear of repercussions. Our company and many companies that work with us have those policies in place. We reinforce it through training and I truly believe that it's starting to take hold out there, that people do understand that we mean it, not just say it. This is all about being a leader and, uh, and about having courage. And, and I think that it's not, it's not about violence. It's not about uh, challenging someone in a way that's going to turn physical. It's about uh, building healthier relationships, building healthier communities. Nobody wants to be the whistleblower, but by being the whistleblower, you're, you're basically taking a stand saying, you know what, that's not okay. Maybe that's all it takes is somebody just pulling your friend aside and saying, you know, what you're doing isn't okay. The women are going to come into our industries. They may not be on our drilling rigs or cutting trees down or wherever they are, but they're going to be there. And they deserve a space there. We're all people. We all deserve to work, live, and feed our families. That's all there is to it. If a woman in our company or in our industry was having issues or experiencing problems, I would hope that they would feel empowered to bring it forward to their supervisor. However, if they're uncomfortable with that situation for any reason, we have other mechanisms to bring those forward. That we would have absolutely no uh, reprisal. Their complaint will be followed through 100%. 
So, you know, perpetrators need supports as well. And we need to recognize what those supports are. And if there's gaps out there, we need to support it. And so with speaking out and being more than a bystander, you're actually um, supporting the whole concept of raising awareness of violence against women. Uh, I've been proud to be a part of that effort for several years here at Encana, where we've taken those active investigations and made good decisions based on uh, the complaints that we've received. And I'd like to think it's made a difference for some of the people that are in those situations. There's the opportunity to have leaders and champions to actually speak out, be more than a bystander, and recognize that this is happening around us, and um, taking that leadership role and that champion role of speaking out against violence against women. So it really makes me um, want to take a stand for this, you know, because I've had the proper training, and by doing nothing, I'm being a bystander, and I don't ever want to be a bystander. You know what's in it for men? honestly is, a, and I know for me, is a sense of personal satisfaction. I see the world through a different set of eyes now, and I'm glad that that's been brought to my attention. These issues that we speak on has just made me more aware and made me really realize that this is an issue that I, I believe in. And it's an issue that most people believe in, but they just kind of gloss over, don't think about every day. So for us to just stand up and say, guys, let's, let's think about this. Let's look at the big picture here and what we could do to help this issue, that's pretty powerful. I believe our company, along with the partners we work with in industry, uh, are on the leading edge when it comes to better defining uh, violence against women and putting policies and programs in place to, to counter that. And as a company, we can teach our guys to treat everybody with respect. Then, yeah, sure, it's one, one step closer to ending violence and sexual harassment in the workplace. I would commend any group, any organization, any company that wants to take this head on. Uh, you know, for us, the BC Lions, was, we were kind of the first team in North America to say, yeah, this is something that we're going to stand up for. And now you can see how it's spread. I think it really uh, affects your own uh, view on things and how you approach relationships. Absolutely. It's a good thing. I have some passion around this because I, I guess as a, as a husband and a father of three and a grandfather of one thus far is if I can make a difference with it, within society to protect my family and protect those loved ones of my family, then maybe I've made a little difference in this world and that'd be pretty cool.